This is the kind of terrain where you'd expect to find a Isuzu D-Max AT35 or even a Ford Ranger Wildtrak X because this is Dinkum 4x4 territory and this is where you would really want to go if you want to test out and do some off-roading and serious off-roading at that. But my question is, if you're not going to spend your life off-road and in rough 4x4 terrain, do you need the vehicle that provides that and gives you the ability but not necessarily the on-road comfort? That's the question. On my right, the Isuzu D-Max AT35. On my left, the Ford Ranger Wildtrak X. Two vehicles that are very familiar on the Motor Matters driveway. You've seen so many different versions of both the D-Max and the Ranger on our channel in the past that we're not going to do a usual video. We're going to see how do they stack up against each other because these two are both the off-road specials in the range. The AT35 is the full-on Dinkum off-road special thing that they do Arctic trucks. It's a conversion built at the uh, Eastern Cape factory where Suzu build their trucks and you can see the differences. The Wildtrak X is even more interesting because it is not the ultimate in the Ranger range. It's one step down. So it's not the full-on bonkers mad crazy Raptor with that V6 petrol engine putting out 292 kilowatts. Nope. This one is one step down, but still so off-road orientated it is unbelievable. So what do they do and what have they done? Well, as you can see, the Isuzu definitely has an advantage on ride height and ground clearance but they both are raised way above the standard. Let's have a look. The name AT35 means it has these 35 inch wheels on it. Just look at them. Look at these tires. They are massive, they are gigantic, they are enormous. The Ranger, no, not quite the same, but note the off-road oriented tires as well. Because both of them, interestingly, have their suspension upgraded by Bilstein. Bilstein shocks, Bilstein general suspension upgrades to go off-road because that's what they designed for. This one is brute, you can see it. Fender extensions, wheel arch extensions, raised ride height, it's got it all. This one, not quite as extreme and whereas your Raptor gives you Fox suspension and shocks and whatever, this runs with Bilstein's. But this one's also got the luxury and the comfort of the wild track. And the other massive difference between the two is, can I say this is old fashioned? This is manual. This one has, yes, it has obviously a selector for two high, four high, four low, and it has a diff lock. But that's kind of where it ends. This one, on the other hand, has all the electronic support. So what does it have? It has two high, four high, four low. It also has four automatic, where the vehicle decides for itself where it wants to apportion drive to which of the four wheels, etc., etc. And it uses a lot more electronics and a lot more of its own brains to decide what it wants to do, how it wants to do, and where it wants to do. It also has modes off-road mode so it has a mode for sand a mode for mud etc etc you get my picture so this one's way more electronic a little bit idiot proof in some ways whereas this one needs you to do a lot more of the work and a lot more of the thinking are you old-fashioned are you old school are you new school electronic those are things you want to think about. Another way, place where the Ranger does also score a little bit is on the camera system, where you've got some off-road camera availability as well, and off-road camera facilities, whereas this one, 
unless you've got a Terence Tracy guiding you through the 4x4 sections, you've got a reverse camera. And I'm afraid I couldn't find any other camera functions on this vehicle. So that's what is so different about the two. Now, let's put it into another context. This, on the spec level, with luxury as in leather interior, etc., etc., you have to watch our other videos to see that. Because we tested the top spec V-Cross version not long ago on the D-Max. It's got the same 3-litre four-cylinder diesel engine that puts out 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters of torque through a six-speed torque converter automatic gearbox. All exactly the same. It's only under there that it's different. So keep that in mind. But you're paying an extra 250,000 Rand for all what's underneath and the ability to go off-road and go off-road properly as you've seen in this video and in our off-road videos where we went off-roading. Now this one, as a contrast, is a million and thirteen thousand rand as opposed to the 925 of a normal wild track. Now interestingly, this has the two-litre bi-turbo diesel engine putting out 154 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of torque through the 10-speed automatic gearbox. See what I mean about it being much more electronic. But now you are talking, as I said, the upgrade to the off-road version, 90 odd thousand rand as opposed to 250 thousand rand. That's quite a difference. But if you want to go off-road and do proper off-roading and live properly off-road, you want something like this or like this or the Raptor, which then goes to about the 1.2 million Rand mark. We aren't even discussing that. The other thing you need to decide for yourself is looking again at these tires. These are off-road oriented tires. In other words, they do compromise your ride on road. And you better just understand and live with that fact. So, my personal opinion and my personal advice, if you're planning to go off-roading regularly and you want to do proper off-roading, these will do the job. But if you're going to spend 95 or 99% of your life on-road, the ride will be compromised. Because of the suspension setup, because of the raised ride height, and because of these knobbly off-road tires. Now that's a decision I can't make for you. It's a case of horses for courses. Which course do you want for your steed? You tell me. But I tell you one thing, as you saw from our off four by fouring and off-roading, they fun. And handled correctly done properly, driven correctly, and led correctly, both of them are practically unstoppable. So that is where the fun factor would come in. I'm not choosing a winner. Sorry, I know you're expecting me to. They are so different in certain ways. Old school, new school. Manual, electronic. You tell me, where do you want to go? For motor matters, for change cars, and for all things motoring, I'm Alan R, and I'll see you next time. Hello, my name is Michael. I'm the owner of Change Cars and the host of the TV show, All Things Motoring. I have one mission, and that is to make a difference to the motoring public. Making a difference how? Making sure that you have safe options, making sure that you have knowledge. In that regard, it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to work with Alan Rosenmeyer of Motor Matters. The man with a hat, I'm the man with no hat, he's a man with the knowledge. Thank you for watching. On the road, the Wildtrak X is an interesting compromise, and I say that for the simple reason that you know, and I've told you many a time before, how incredibly smooth and comfortable the ride is on the Rangers. But this Wildtrak X does compromise that a little bit because of those big knobbly tires and the upgraded off-road suspension. 
So no, it's not the same as a normal wild track. That's what I was, you've got to understand and you've got to just get that because no, it's not as comfortable as an everyday driver as a wild track would be. But if you're gonna go off the road, it's really amazing and it really handles it. It is definitely smoother on road than for example, the AT35 is, I'm sorry to say. But that's because they've started with such an amazing, fantastic platform. There's the Ranger is and we all know that and that's the point. So the question I have to ask and I keep asking myself is where do you want your compromise? Where do you want to put yourself in what you are and aren't prepared to live with? Because that's what it's going to come down to at the end of the day. Do you want pure comfort? And real comfort in Bucky terms that the Ranger can offer that, sorry, so far nobody else comes close to. Now obviously our three-point turn spot, we're not going to make the three-point turn, but that's no surprise, is it? But then look at your camera system over here as well, while we are just showing you quickly. Standard on wild track, etc. So it's nothing different, but the overhead camera as well as the reverse camera. So there you go. But it wasn't a major maneuver. But it just is a question of what you're prepared to accept and what's your level of acceptability on drivability, comfort, and sheer cruising ability as an everyday vehicle. That one's your choice, I really can't say. Open road obviously is not the ultimate space and place for the AT35. Now what do I mean by that? Well, it's quite simple. This thing is built for off-roading. It's built for ice, it's built for snow, or it's built for mud, or anything you like, but off-road conditions, not driving on roads. So a smooth piece, piece of road is pretty good, but when you get to a bit of a bumpier road, you feel the bumps, let's put it that way, but that's because of the suspension and because of the off-road tires that it's got. So you've just got to accept the compromise, and that's the point of this vehicle. You want this because you're going to use it, and you're going to use it for what it's built for, not just for cruising around. It just maybe isn't exactly ideal for that, but you know what? You've got to experience it, and you've got to know what its off-road abilities are, and if you're the kind of guy that's going to use that sometimes, this thing can do the business. It really can. Enough power, enough go, smooth enough otherwise. Overall, I think you get the picture.